So what I'm going to do is uh, lap the valves in. This is a valve grinding compound. Lapping compound, same thing. You can get this usually in fine or coarse, but this is just... This is, I don't know, I don't know what this is. This is just regular shit. Um, basically what this does is it, it seats the valves in with the, uh, the valve seats. So uh, the valves seal properly. Um, all you need is about this much, not that much at all. And you just kind of spread it around and kind of dab it. So first I'm going to lap the intake valve. So what you're going to do is put it on. Uh, you can put a bit on here if you like, but uh, I'll see how this is first. This is a valve lapping stick. You, you can get this at uh, Napa or, or any parts store. This is a small stick. There's usually two sizes, a small and large one. Large ones for bigger valves. So you're going to want to stick the stick in the middle. Or as close to it. It's just a little suction cup. And you're going to want to twist it kind of quick. Small, and, and you're going to want to spin it in small increments before you actually pick it up and start dabbing it again. Just to, just to spread the uh, compound around a little bit. Uh, sometimes it's kind of hard to determine if, uh, if it's actually fully lapped, but what you're going to kind of look for is almost like a shiny metallic kind of uh, edge on it like this. If you see on the very corner of it where it meets it's almost like a gray metallic shiny metal kind of color. What you can also do is the uh, marker trick which is what I'll do on the next valve here. Okay so this is the marker trick. What you can do is take a permanent marker and uh, kind of almost paint or mark just the outside meeting area of where the valve actually meets up with the uh, valve seat. The whole point of this is so uh, you, you know where you've actually lapped the valve and you know where you haven't. All the black spots kind of uh, show where the valve hasn't been lapped yet and all the clear spots shows where the valve has been lapped. So that's a really easy way so you can tell if the valve has been lapped properly or not. So after having lapped both valves, um, I'm going to now uh, put them back in with the springs and all the retainers and everything. But uh, make sure you don't lap the valves too much because uh, sometimes you can actually lap them too much and uh, it'll make too much of a spot that's actually lapped with the valve and also if you lap it too much it'll actually um, make uh, less of a gap between your uh, valve, valve to tappet clearance there's actually a set valve to tappet clearance uh, unfortunately for this engine I don't know it so I'm kinda just kinda have to go with everything that's you know kinda going on but um, on a regular you know Briggs and Stratton um, the clearance is, is in the book and sometimes uh, if you lap it in too much the valve will actually be sticking up a little tiny hair like hair amount because uh, the valve to tappet clearance is what controls um, the, the space between the bottom of the valve and the top of the tappet which is inside here and if that space isn't enough it's not going to get enough uh, oil between it and of course if it's too much of a space the, the valve will um, have a delay with coming up so it'll kind of retard the timing and it also won't lift the valve up as much as what it would if the valve to top of clearance is proper okay uh, I just got the hardest uh, valve in which is the exhaust valve um, one good way to tell if your valves are actually sealing properly is if you shine the light here in the port um, you can see if there's any light shining around the valve which there isn't and if you shine the light at the valve, there's nothing coming in from the port. That's a quick way to tell if your valve's uh, good or if you should relap it or if it's sealing at all. You know, maybe uh, the clearance might be off or something. You know, 
Um, but yeah, this one was really good. Seems like the more and more I work on this engine, the more I like it. I've never really worked on a Honda, taking it apart at least. Um, I was looking at it and uh, this is actually a copper ring around this gasket. So uh, it looks like a, some kind of crush ring. But uh, I'm pretty sure I can reuse this gasket, no problem. Um, that's good. I've never really seen a copper, a copper ring around it before. Um, on all the Briggs and Stratton ones, it's just the whole thing's just composite. But it's pretty cool with the copper ring. I like it. So I remember when you uh, torque down the head. Um, always uh, torque a crisscross pattern, even with a used gasket or with anything, because if you torque it you know like kind of one away um, what it can do is it can wrinkle the gasket and it can break it so uh, but if you crisscross it it actually tightens the gasket properly and puts everything down you know at a proper pressure for all the way around so uh, it doesn't damage the gasket usually there's actually a three-step torquing uh, method uh, same for car tires too there's actually a three-step one where you torque it like a low, medium, and like a high, for the full torque. But uh, most people just skip it and they just go to a, you know, straight to the torque, or just a two-step where it's like medium and then hard. But uh, I don't know the torque specs for this, so um, I'm just gonna torque it till it feels right. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna start off doing like a low, medium kind of torque. Then I'll do the uh, stronger torque. Okay, so this is the first test run of the uh, Honda. successful.